Hello indie game fans, it's been a while since we last took a look at first person shooters where there are suddenly a whole bunch of them in development, coming in at 25 games of interest for the Steam Nix festival, so if you love this genre, pick and choose what you would like to check out. Let's begin with Aegis Descent, an interesting looking mech title that pleases you in a cockpit, but it looks rather strange in terms of movement and maneuverability. The action does look good however, having a roguelite structure as well for replayability. After years of waiting for a new Golden Eye or a remaster of the classic, this indie developer has given up and just went ahead to make their own with Agent 64 Spies Never Die. It is fairly blatant in its inspiration and has a look similar to games on the N64 which is impressive, but it is a little bit more polished and clean in my opinion. It is however currently just a single player experience where I would like to see them nail this concept first. An impressive looking entry is Binary Run, having quite the obvious synth wave theme with the neon colours and bright lights as you battle your way through a corrupted digital world. The opening seconds for the trailer for Cultic is impressive, where it looks great in motion as well, where you somehow crawl out of your own grave and now have to fight your way through the members of a twisted cult. The textures in this are very interesting as well, reminiscent of games from another era with fantastic action. Aside from Gunfire Reborn, I don't think that the roguelite first person shooter has really taken off, so I'm excited to see what Dead Link does, a cyberpunk entry where you're taking on mega corporations, but I'm interested to see if there's anything mechanically interesting here. Diluvian Ultra is another amazing looking retro first person shooter where, I quote, rather than gritty or dark, Diluvian Ultra is colourful and fantastical, like the cover of pulp sci-fi novels of the past which does make it stand out even more visually. Interestingly, this has everything from guns to swords and even organic creatures as weapons, with combat that forces you to switch between weapons for maximum effectiveness. This Terra perhaps sticks out like a sore thumb in this video, since it is more of a survival game rather than a first person shooter, but I thought it looked neat and didn't have anywhere else to put it, so here it is. It 
it is a sci-fi entry where you need to find a way to survive on a prison planet, gathering resources, building your base, and exploring and battling enemies, even having gigantic bosses as well. Another long in development retro title is Exophobia, one that has to be inspired by Wolfenstein 3D, where you're fighting your way through an alien infested spaceship. It has some Metroidvania-like elements with upgradable weapons that allow you to access new areas, so it's not just a linear level-based entry, where after many years, I'm fairly confident that 2022 will be the year of release. I've also mentioned Fashion Police Squad before, we are literally wielding a sewing machine gun among others in an attempt to fix fashion faux pas as you explore the city. It looks great and is an interesting change outside of the usual blood and guts, which does show the innovativeness of indie developers, where Little Bird told me that it will release later this year. Just a quick trailer for Frog Monster, a voxel first-person shooter that has you taking on all sorts of creatures like giant snakes and frogs. Of the Wolfenstein 3D likes in this video, I think that Gastro Force looks the best, with an interesting setup as well, where you play as an elite trooper entering alien guts to destroy them from the inside, looking very classically designed. As with a number of games on this list, the visuals are what drew my attention to Ghostware Arena of the Dead, another early 90s inspired retro first person shooter where you play as a ghost trapped inside an arena FPS, created by a wizard who was unable to let go of the past. It is meta in that sense, so the setup is cool, but otherwise looks similar to Unreal Tournament or Quake, looking pretty neat. Hello, Doctor. I had hoped for us to meet at my estate. No matter. I can guarantee your safe arrival. A promise few others here can make. The townsfolk are not fond of outsiders. Don't delay. I have something a little different here in Gloomwood, a first-person immersive sim that is more like Thief, with both melee weapons and guns. It is set in a Victorian city consumed by an ancient curse where you have to find a way to survive and escape. It looks amazing and comes to us from fantastic developers and it does seem like anything that publisher New Blood Interactive touches turns to gold, making this of interest. I mentioned Hands of Necromancy a little while back, being another boomer shooter, but one that pays tribute to Heretic rather than Doom.
like Exophobia mentioned above, it does have Metroidvania elements, where instead of learning to summon skeletons, you can somehow transform into creatures like a swamp serpent or a demon, being able to swim or walk on lava respectively, which allows you to access new areas. <sighs> It uses the GZ Doom engine, which is fairly popular among indie developers, capitalizing on that to great effect, and with its release being next week, do check out the demo. There are a number of arena first-person shooters as well, where we are looking at Impaler here, a title whose most direct comparison should be Devil Daggers, where it is about trying to survive for as long as you can, layering in roguelite progression so it should have a compelling gameplay look. Co-op shooters can be especially fun, with games like Left 4 Dead, Deep Rock Galactic and Payday 2 leading the way, which makes Rip Out one of interest. It does have a horror element where you're fighting off mutated creatures, but I suppose it won't exactly be scary, especially with friends. A very long in development title is Salako, an all-action linear title with handcrafted set pieces taking inspiration from Fear but incorporates elements from Quake and Doom as well. That's right. Slots are now open on the Coalition Circuit Collective. New members are needed to help fully unlock our new planet's potential. Discover the Martian Wilderness today. It takes place in an underground facility in the post-apocalypse after the fall of Earth, where our heroine is investigating the mystery behind said facility. What we got? Visually, it does look like Proteus from 2020, which is amazing in my opinion, so be sure to play the demo.
This next entry is interesting since Skull Ritual is actually based on a first person survival horror game from 2020 named Made of Skull, where this is somehow being turned into a co-op first person shooter which is a curiosity. Off the top of my head, I don't have any example of a horror game that pulled this move that did well, see Dead Space for example, but who knows, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. You blew up my family! You hacked my computer. You killed my best friend. And you thought you killed me. For two years, I've been biding my time. Hack blood energy rages through my veins. Hope you're ready, you mother flippin' turd pile. Because I am the X Slayer. I've mentioned Slayer's X Terminal Aftermath Vengeance of the Slayer before, a spin off of Hypnospace Outlaw with a very retro look and honestly, kind of a cringe setup which I believe is intentional, so do check it out and see how this plays. I gotta thank channel subscriber Nicholas Aguilar for this recommendation as well as Selako mentioned earlier since Trepang 2 is a very impressive looking first person modern military shooter that looks like all action all the time. While you do have superpowers in this game, it is perhaps not as fantastical as some other games so you're not casting fireballs for example but do have superhuman strength and speed bullet time, cooking, and more. While this specific subgenre is dominated by Call of Duty, this game looks impressive and will be for fans of the genre. Let's kick off the top 5 with Hellscream, one that immediately stands out due to the art style and colour palette chosen using teals and reds to represent a hellscape similar to what you would see in a 90s shooter. The gimmick in this game is that you straight up have a rear view mirror as if you were driving a car where you do have to use it to identify enemies behind you or even to uncover invisible ones. I think that the action looks cool but it does crack me up to think about the logistics of how this would work where in my head the character looks something like my excellent drawing here but putting that aside, I do think it's worth a play. I've had my eye on Perish for quite a while, a first person action title with a vaguely Egyptian theme, one that utilizes black and gold as a colour scheme and does feed into the mechanics as well. On top of looking sick, you are slaying these creatures in purgatory, selling their gold stained corpses to the priests in order to get currency for upgrades or in the hope of getting into Elysium. It looks amazing as well, but if I were to guess, this sure looks like an Unreal Engine game even having co-op support as well. Honestly, I'm always a little hesitant to cover Metal Hellsinger since I keep getting copyright strikes from their trailers, but if you love metal, this is an obvious pick.
It is a rhythm first person shooter where you need to shoot, reload, dodge and more on the beat which changes the pacing of the gameplay but if the music that I have heard so far is anything to go by will be a title that absolutely slaps. A fan favourite title is Anger Foot, reviewed at the Devolver Direct, and already has a playable demo where this cartoony first person shooter adds in a kicking mechanic. I expect that you will be able to kick enemies into walls, other enemies, traps and off buildings which already looks fun, where developer Free Lives have made games like Broforce, Genital Jousting and Gorn, so I do have full faith in the team. Put simply, the developers or whoever they hired simply knows how to make a trailer since Bloodhound kicks off with action and simply never stops, being exactly what you want for a first person shooter. It is very much like old school Doom where you battle demons and is very fast paced, looking excellent as well, taking the number one spot. For more first person shooters, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.